All right, unit four today is on Europe, uh, chapters 12 through 14. And this first page will deal with the physical geography of Europe found in chapter 12. And we'll go to number 10. So most of Europe lies within 300 miles of a seacoast. Uh, because of the way it's shaped, um, you could drive inland and once you reach about 300 miles, you would then continue on and be getting closer to another sea coast. Europe is often called a peninsula of peninsulas. So as we look at the shape of it, you've got water on the uh, northwest side, down the, the western side, southwest, and along the southern side, there's water. So being bordered by water on three sides, in an, it does in fact make it a peninsula. So let's name uh, the peninsulas that are found on Europe. Uh, we can start up here with the Scandinavian, that's Sweden and Norway. We've got the Jutland Peninsula with the country of Denmark. Uh, down here is the Iberian Peninsula, and that's the countries of Spain and Portugal. We've got the Italian Peninsula or the Apennine Peninsula. And then of course the Balkan Peninsula, which involves quite a few countries there. Uh, we're not gonna talk about this peninsula, the Crimean, because we're going to pick up the former Soviet republics in our next unit. So here's the list. Scandinavian again, Norway, Sweden, Jutland is Denmark, Iberian, Spain, and Portugal. Italian, of course, the country of Italy or the Apennine. Uh, Balkan, former Yugoslav countries or republics. Uh, Albania, Bulgaria, Greece, Romania and the European part of Turkey are on that Balkan Peninsula. Uh, the term fjords, these are deep sea field valleys that are cut by glaciers as the glaciers were melting and retreating, going back to the north, uh, they gouged out these huge areas. Um, I think there's over a thousand fjords on the west coast of Norway um, and the biggest of those probably about 200 miles that it goes inland uh, from the sea. So pretty amazing physical feature there or features with these fjords. That's a beautiful picture there. Okay, major islands for Europe. <clears throat> they include I Iceland, uh, Great Britain, Greenland, which of course belongs to Denmark, and Ireland, which is often called the Emerald Isle. It's so green all the time. Um, then we have Crete, Corsica, Sardinia, and Sicily that could be found in the, the Mediterranean Sea. These are the Mediterranean islands. <clears throat> Corsica belonging to France, Sardinia and Sicily belonging to Italy, and Crete, of course, belonging to Greece. Um, three prominent mountain ranges. We've got the Alps, probably the most well-known, bordering uh, France, Italy, Switzerland and Austria, Germany. Uh, the Pyrenees, which separates France and Spain. The small, tiny country of Andorra is nestled in the Pyrenees Mountains. And the Apennines, which runs down the length of Italy. Some call it the backbone of Italy. The North European Plain is one of the world's most fertile agricultural regions. Uh, you can see it goes up along the coast of France, across into uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, and on into Poland and other uh, parts of Europe, the former Soviet republics there. So a very fertile agricultural land in that North European Plain. Polders, these are drained areas of land below sea level. So this takes place most takes place mostly in the Bel in Belgium and the Netherlands, sorry. Um, I believe it's about 40% of their land is below sea level. And so at some point they had to make causeways, dams, dikes, and, and then pump the water out uh, anciently or a while back using uh, windmills, but uh, now of course probably using diesel and electric motors to pump that water out. Uh, if those 
dikes are breached, then of course there's major flooding, which I have a picture of later. But if they can keep them intact and uh, then they can, a lot of areas where they can live and, and raise crops and make, make good use of this land. Major rivers include the Rhine and the Danube. I need to change my pictures. I think it's actually the same river, just a little bit different perspective, but those are a couple of the major rivers. There are others. Um, there's the Thames in England, the Seine in France. There's also the Rhone. Um, part of the former Soviet Republic is the Volga. Uh, anyway, oh, the Po, the Po is found in Italy, so lots of rivers there. Uh, resources include coal, iron, oil, natural gas. Uh, P, this is quite an interesting one here, partially decayed plant matter that's found in bogs. So you've got the, the area here where they can cut down, There's, they have special shovels, and they'll cut into the peat, uh, stack it up, and let it dry, then they could basically burn it like firewood. So. It is a uh, source of fuel that they could use. Um, I also mentioned to the students that there's some areas, some of these bogs that are, they're not the firm uh, areas like you see here, but they're more uh, wet. And somebody could really get stuck in there. Uh, people have gone into them, got stuck and died. Uh, I'm sure some have been put there intentionally and I have a picture of one at the final slide today. Uh, North Atlantic drift, a current of warm water from the tropics. And this is what really gives Western Europe its mild climate. So we, when we look at a, a map and we look at the latitude, we can see that uh, basically Europe is on the same latitude as um, Canada and Alaska but because of its location and that North Atlantic drift, it causes it to be uh, more mild, not as cold, not as snowy. So that comes up along the, the east coast of South America and then across the Atlantic and up the west coast of Europe. A Mistral is a cold, dry wind from the north and a Scirocco is a hot wind from North Africa. So this is the end of page one. Uh, there's the, the bog body, as you call it. Uh, the exception of the, the cheek kind of being squished um, and the, the skin looking very much like dirt. Um, you know, that person is well preserved and they look like they're asleep. And then there are some of these areas that look like that where it's still very wet and uh, muddy. So that is page one. Thank you.